where we've thought that far through the process. You know, we're in the preliminary stages of trying to figure out how we can raise the money. You know, when we get to the point of actually preparing to do the work, then I think some of these questions need to be answered before we pull the trigger. Yeah. Okay. Also I, also, I think everybody should be aware of the fact that there are two houses out of the 37 who have decided to put on siding and whatever they wanted to do outside, and it was approved at the owner's expense. So when we do this, we're figuring on 35 houses in lieu of 37. Okay, and that's Esther Williams. Uh, Esther Williams. <laughs> that takes me back to the 30s and 40s. <laughs> Esther Wilson and uh, Bill Roselle. Okay, and Esther's house has been sold. It's going to be closing at the end of February. I think the other. Yes, Paul. You need to answer one question before we answer the second one. Okay. I need to make the. the you're, you're uh, I can't make the word, but you know what Laura I'm trying to say. Get the answer how much money you have before you say how much we will pay for each house. Well, I think the two go hand in hand. I mean, we've, we've, we've got to figure out but a way of... do it uh, one and then the other, not both together. Well, we're, we're trying to figure out yeah. how to get the money. That's the idea. You know, in the back of our for minds, for, the for reason that we're trying... To, the reason that we're trying to figure out how to get the money is in the back of our mind. This is coming up fast, the replacement. So you can vote yes and no, eventually. In terms of what? You're... We're not ready to vote. That's right. Oh, you've got three weeks. <laughs> Seriously. I think what Paul is trying to say is that we need to get this part addressed before we start getting into all these other questions. Right. Yeah. Right. People right. are asking questions that right. are not really pertinent to right. this particular issue. Exactly. exactly. The, the whole we need first. money. We don't need decisions right now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I totally agree. The whole purpose of this is to try and figure out how to get the money. That's the idea. Once once we can see our way clear to get in the money, then you're correct. Then we start with the details about when and how much and what colours and, and stuff like that. Exactly. So let's oh, get on with it. Well, one other thing that, that does enter into this, this was, we've been working on this for the last several weeks. One of the things that's come up, we're, we're saying that the siding is $15,000 per house. I've spent a lot of time with Dick in the last few days. Someone in Summerside came up with an idea that we've now perpetuated. We think, we think, we're not sure, but we think that th this is on the high side. So at the end of the day, when we're ready to start going out for a bit, maybe the 15 becomes 12, or maybe it becomes 13 or 11,000. So I think for the purpose of this, I've left it high, knowing that hopefully we can bring that down. Obviously, if we can bring it down, then the overall amount of money that we need also comes down, okay? Okay. I had a question that it does involve the, the toss. What kind of roofing are you talking about? I've had it expressed to me that uh, uh, buying uh, cheap asbestos roofing is a waste of money. I agree. The architectural grade. Well, I, and I think, again, that, that's a detail. I think what we would probably do is, as I said earlier, we'll replace like for like. So right now, you're right. I mean, the, the, the roofing tiles that are on these houses is basically junk. We'll replace it with junk unless you want to upgrade it. Right. So the people that are happy with junk, that's what they get. The ones that want to upgrade to architectural tiles, there'll be an upcharge for it. Okay? And when I said you got three weeks by, you know, to make a decision, I, I wasn't trying to be funny. Um, by the covenants, 
when something like this comes up, we by the covenants have to give you at least three weeks to make a decision. So we, we're not going to vote this afternoon, okay? At least three weeks down the road. Okay, so we talked about the bank loan. We talked about changing the HR responsibility. Now we're getting into the really controversial ones. Having a, set, a, a special assessment, a one-time assessment of 12,500. Hands up all those people who want to pay 12,500. <laughs> All right, there's one. <laughs> you pay it one way or the other. Well, you do, but we've come up with a way that we think we can kind of ease the pain. But if we can get everyone to write a check for $12,500, problem solved. <laughs> Paul's the only one. <laughs> I don't want to pay it. <laughs> um, now, that, that could be split over 12 months or 24 months. Um, I don't have the math. Oh, uh, no, I don't have the math. But I think over 12 months, it works out to be just over 1000 a month. Over 24 months, just over $500 a month. Either way, it's a lot of money. I don't want to write a check every month for $1,000 or $500. But it's an option. And again, if, you know, if we have a vote, maybe the majority of people will vote for doing that. That's okay. Finally, no, four, yeah. oh, four. So this is also highly con controversial. Charge a membership fee to live in Hillside of $10,000. Okay, the, the reason that came up, the, the reason that came up was obviously Rolling Green has recently raised the fees to live in Rolling Green. Is now a $12,000 charge for the first person and a $6,000 charge for the second person. There's been a lot of arguments, there's been a lot of meetings, there's been a lot of controversy over these charges. The official word from Rolling Green is, if somebody wants to live in Rolling Green, they'll pay the charges. The new fees will have no effect. So what we've said is, well, if they have no effect, let's add another $10,000 on. You know, we'll make it you know, 10 or 12 plus six to Rolling Green and 10 to Hillside, you know, and yes. Is that just the new people coming in? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And Rolling Green, I'll address it, but Rolling Green hasn't said it'll have no effect. In the meetings I've been in, Ruth, they have. Well, I'm the one in charge of all that, so I will tell you what we're doing. Okay, well, you can address that in a second if you would. I mean, that's that's what I've heard in, in these meetings. You know, if someone wants to live in Rolling Green, it doesn't make a difference what the fees are. They'll pay and they're going to live here. Okay? Yeah, but you're not the only one. Um, so if we did, if we did institute a ten thousand dollar membership fee, it helps, but it's not it's not going to solve the problem. We don't have enough people moving in and out of hillside you know to get to the the short shortfall it would help that's all so we don't we don't have enough inventory in fact the, the houses that are available are practically all all sold except one yeah yeah so i mean it's an idea possible idea number five i i've saved the best for last and this is something that came up over the weekend so change the future of the ho fee increases to 10% per year, every year until 2032. Let me go on to the next chart. In, in fact, I've got a um, spreadsheet here. Maybe we could pass out. So before I get into the details, I do want to point out that we've got our friends in friends and neighbors in Hillside to thank for the basis of this. 
We've worked very hard over the last few days to put this together. Personally, I think it makes a lot of sense. Ultimately, it's obviously it's what you or you collectively think. So I've, I've summarized what you've got on those spreadsheets on this board here. So I've got the years 2023 through 2030. I left off the last few years. We're gonna we're gonna have a nine and a half percent increase to our fees every year, no matter what. If inflation falls to one percent, we're still gonna add nine and a half percent. Who said that? <laughs> he said, woohoo! Oh, he's happy. He's happy. <laughs> it, it, it's actually not not that bad. If you look at that last column on the right, it tells you what the increase by month is in dollars. And when I say it's not that bad, obviously any increase is not good, but the the in the increases in dollars is not that great. Okay, so this year we're paying three hundred and five dollars a month. The amount that is that goes to the reserve is one hundred and twenty-two dollars a month, or fifty. I've rounded these numbers up from your spreadsheet, but approximately fifty-four thousand dollars per year. Next year, nine and a half percent monthly fee goes to three thirty-two. Amount to the reserve is one thirty-two. The total annual funding is 59 and on down. Now, by the time we get to 2030, it's $557 a month. Amount to the reserve is 223. The total for the year is 99,000. Okay. The beauty of having it in black and white on this spreadsheet is you can, you, it's easy to forecast how much money we're going to need. We might get to, let's say, 2026 or 2027. We fix the roofs. Maybe we put the money aside for the siding or maybe it's done. And we say, well, we don't need any big expenditure. We don't need 9.5% anymore. So we can reduce it down to 2% or 3% or whatever it is. This just shows over a 10-year period if we need to go that far. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the monthly basis. Down, down at the bottom, bottom part of the uh, spreadsheet, you've got some more columns, a beginning balance and hillside HOA funding, interest at 2% and year end totals. So if you look at 2023, that number was taken off the December 31st uh, balance sheet. We had 443,958. This year, we're going to add 54,000 in round numbers. I've, I've added in 2% interest on the base amount of 443. Obviously, there'll be a little more interest than that as we go through the year. But just to make it easy, I added 2% of the base amount. You add that all together, the end of this year will have 507,000. You go to the next column, we carry that 507 over. We add in the HOA funding, 59,000. We add in the interest, we end up next year with 576,188. So obviously you, if you go across, you can see each year how much, much money we have. Now that doesn't factor in um, any unforeseen major expense? I can't. I can't think quite honestly what a major expense might be, but maybe some of the drainage collapses. I don't know. You know, we have to spend a hundred thousand on getting drainage done. Well, obviously that money comes out of the reserve, so it would affect this. So this this is assuming there's no major expense. The no, the nice thing about this, or not the nice thing, but one thing to point out. The amount that we're, um, the amount that's going to the reserve each month is 40% of the actual um, actual monthly fees. There's still 60% of the monthly fee that goes 
into the general fund, if you like, for other repairs and other expenses. So it's not like we're draining it all to go to the reserve. There's still plenty of money, you know, for Lexi to spend. <laughs> so. If, if you didn't hear that, Ruth said she's a penny pincher. Yes. <laughs> you should be very happy about that. We are very happy. So you can see, you know, we're, we're looking for about 850,000. You can see that, you know, o over a certain number of years, we start to get up into those higher numbers. What I've said is I think we need to come up with a five-year plan. You know, maybe starting next year where we start to replace the siding, maybe we do 10 houses a year for two and a half years. And then on the back end, two and a half years, we start to replace the roofs. So over a five year period, you know, we should have enough money to, to do those two things. And that's obviously the goal of why we're here today. So my personal opinion, which doesn't count for much, but I like this. There's no out of money, uh, no out of money expense this year. We're already paying the nine and a half percent increase on the first line, so there's no change to this year. Next year, it starts to to bite a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I don't know how all of you feel, but uh, everything that Kate just brought up, this seems like the less painful than the other options you know, as, as to what we pay, because it increases a little bit each year per month, and I feel like it, it, it can be handled better than, say, an assessment of 5,000 or 10,000. But that's up to all of you. It's going up every year anyway. It goes right. up every year anyway. Exactly. exactly right. Exactly. And all we're doing is we're saying instead of tying it to like the cost of living, it's, just, it's going to be nine and a half percent no matter what. Right. Now, you know, if for some reason inflation goes crazy and it goes up to uh, 15 or 16 percent, we're going to have to adjust this, obviously. We can't leave it at nine and a half. But, you know, failing the, the unforeseen extremes, this seems to work. Okay. Oh, one thing that Lexi just pointed out, out to me is, you know, if I, if I go back one page to some of the other uh, options. We've already been advised by our the HOA attorney that some of those options are not good because it's going to make it much more difficult to sell the house if you know if you need to sell your house. You know, in this particular case, you know, if you're going to, this is really a special assessment. You know, if you're going to sell your house, let's say. You, you know, your house is sold next year, you have to disclose to the buyer that there's a special assessment through at least 2030. You can't just sell your house and not tell someone, okay? Um, I think- That's especially if all the other HOAs aren't doing that. Well, they're all gonna do something, John, because everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, what I'm saying, if they all do the 10,000, then it would be easy. Yes, uh, oh, we've already had one OH drop out. One, one HOS said there's no way they're going to add ten thousand dollars. They just won't do it. So you only need one, and that kind of destroys that that whole concept, you know. And 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 it, that it, you know, in my mind, that wasn't a big disappointment. I think, you know, charging a ten thousand dollar fee. Would, I think, and Ruth can speak to this in a minute. I think. That there are people that won't move into Rolling Green because of the twelve thousand dollars and the six thousand dollars for the second person. You throw in another ten thousand dollars, you know, the, the the pool of people that potentially can afford to move in gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. So, I think we're just damaging our own, you know, prospects at that point. Susie, <laughs> well, I'm going to go by what you said in the beginning. Stand up, tell who you are. And after questions. My name is Susie Ware. I live at 17 Milstead. Uh, Paul and I own that house. I originally owned the house that Keith now lives in and then Paul, I sold it and we bought the other house. I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. I hope I can get them all in here. Um, after the reserve, if you were to do this program, after the reserve was full, 
would the uh, long-term assessment remain no. or would that no. quit? Well, okay. Not, I mean, the beauty of that, Susie, is yeah. that, that can be changed at any time. Like I said, if inflation takes off and goes to 15%. Which it's already done, <laughs> basically. Well, it didn't get to 15. Not no, yet. not 15. Uh, but if it changes, you know, we have to change the nine and a half upwards if it yeah. goes crazy. So it can be changed. Yeah. According, uh, and I haven't, I've been looking at the covenants this morning. Uh, do we have to change the covenants to adjust the percentage that we can raise the uh, uh, annual or regular assessment? No. Yeah, we're, the, the board can change it up to 10%. Up to 10%. Over 10%, we need a two-thirds okay. majority. Now, now can, can, you're, you're, we're in the process of rewriting the Yeah, plan. I know you are. Yeah. And what we'll probably do, and again, if we make changes, it requires a two-thirds majority. Mm -hmm. but what, we, what we're proposing to do is changing that two-thirds majority to a simple majority. So, you know, so half the people, more than half the people have to agree as opposed to two thirds. Well, we'll, we'll see how that comes out. Um, the other thing, one of the other things you were assuming on the bottom of this, that there is going, you can get 2% on your money on what you've got uh, invested. And I'm not sure that that's gonna remain realistic either. Probably, it may not. It may, yeah. Right right now, we're getting four, over 4%. Is that on the financial advisory account or a CD? CD. So, okay. And will those CD rates remain that high? Because I know a lot of them have gone much lower. Well, as long as the federal interest rate keeps going up, the CD yeah. rates are still going to go up. Yeah, that's, that's, you're right. You're right. So, All right. The next question I have is that you're going out 10 years. Um, and if these roofs need to be replaced before the time frame that you're stating was what, 2027, I believe? No, it was 2032. For the roof. Was the roofs and the siding was 2027. If the siding needs to be replaced prior to that time, uh, how will that be uh, addressed if we don't yet have the money in the reserve account to do that? It's not all the houses. Hmm? You wouldn't. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're just going to do no, it. Go ahead. You wouldn't do them all at once. You would do them on an as needed basis. The POA I lived at before in North Carolina, this is basically the same schedule we put together mm -hmm. to maintain a four mile road. Yeah. Uh, and they told us it had a, a 20 year life. Honestly, when they estimate those things, it's usually the half life. So we put in an, an increased schedule. And we didn't have to change the covenants, so that's the beauty of this thing. I don't think you have to change the covenants. Uh, but you do have to have a buy-in before you yeah. pull something up that off. We actually cut it to level after 10 years mm -hmm. instead out of a 20-year schedule because we were getting better returns. Than right. And part of this goes back to what Ruth apparently is going to address at a later point with the, with the amounts that uh, new buyers are looking at. Uh, I've talked with some folks in Summerside and there have already been four buyers for one house that as soon as they found out what the fees were, uh, they backed out of the transaction altogether. Now that, is a one-time deal uh, and I don't know how a potential buyer is going to look at the fees, the monthly fees that we're looking at having here. Um, I don't like, I don't want to pay an assessment either, honestly. However, um, I think if it looked like being an assessment that you were going to have to add to the fees that are already being charged by Rolling Green, as a buyer, I would be very reluctant to buy that house. If the assessment was done in a one-time deal, you could roll that into the price of your house. So if you had a $200,000 house, uh, you could add in 15,000 to cover $5,000 wiggle room, $10,000 for the assessment, but it would be more of a hidden cost and it would just be part of your house price. Uh, tax-wise might end up better for the buyer and the seller 
to have that kind of a fee in, already included in the price of your house. Uh, but you've got to look at it from the potential buyer outlook and the psychology of the buyer. Am I going to buy this house for 100, 200, whatever it is, plus paying all these membership fees and all of these fees? Part of the attractiveness was the fact that our maintenance fees were not that tremendously high. And um, look what happened. We've yeah, I, oh, I agree. Something has been remiss for a long time. Yes. But, you know, that's not your fault, may not be the current board's fault. So. Susie, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Off the record. I heard, now this is strictly hearsay, okay? The four people that looked at that house, and I don't know, I guess Dick could back, maybe back it up. I heard that it was the condition of the house. I heard it was the fees. Uh, uh, I was told it was fees. So uh, I don't know if it's the same house even that we're talking about. But uh, yeah, I don't anyhow. Know. But there, you know, there are, there are advantages to doing it this way. Tax advantages at the time of a sale might be wiser to do a one-time lump sum assessment and roll it into your cell phone. You'll never collect it. In fact, Warren Dudley brought up the fact that he had, there were two buyers in his uh, area and they didn't or question the fees at all. So and they may have had the money not to. You know, that's fine. You don't know. I just want to add one thing before Jimmy speaks. Um, don't, as John pointed out, there are going to be increases every year, no matter what. Oh, I agree. You know, all we're doing is we're standardizing it's a question it. Percent. As, as, yes, exactly. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you. I think you guys did a great job on this, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I just have a different kind of question, completely different. You talked about cleaning out the gutters, and you said somebody can opt out of that. Is it, has anybody looked at the fact that if you opt, if they opt out of that, does that affect what happens to the roof, which is then becomes the HOA's responsibility? The person that has opted out, the reason they did is because they they've recently already had their gutters done by a different company. That was just, I just but yeah, I thought the learning. same thing when she called, but with some investigation, that's what it was in that case. Okay. Otherwise. Because, no, if you haven't had yours cleaned out, you can't decline someone cleaning the gutters or having a roof inspected. Thank you, that just yeah. concerns me. If, if you do, then that voids the uh, HOA's responsibility. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes sense. Uh, John Moore, uh, I was involved in the PLA HOA for about 20 years before I moved here. The problem with special assessments that our attorneys kept telling us is that I don't have to pay it. You take it to court, the court says pay it, and it becomes a mechanics lien that's collectible when the house changes hands. Either, at some point it just, you're gonna pay it. Someday, 20 years from now, you pay it, but you do not get the money right away. And that's the real issue with that. I mean, I tell you, my attorney, would, you know, that's exactly what he tell me. Don't pay it, it's not your problem. And it's the next owner's problem. Laws might be different in South Carolina, it's effective not. But a special assessment is, is very difficult. We passed on it and honestly went with your schedule to keep our road in good repair. And that's how it worked. So, but and that one, that one works. And I do have a question about that then. This is a special assessment, even if it's a monthly fee rolled into no. our maintenance, no, it is it not? It isn't really. It's, it's part not of your, it's part of your They record. just got done saying it was a special assessment. No. Well, it it some it of not. those would classify as being a special. This one here is not a special assessment because we don't need approval from the residents. It's under 10%. Yeah, you, the board can do this. Okay. You don't need that. Yeah, and the only re obviously the only reason that we're presenting it is really as a courtesy, just so everyone's aware. Yeah. As yeah, a not a <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not a courtesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, answer it now. Thank you for walking around with the microphone, Keith. You're welcome. It's something I do well. <laughs> Maybe the only thing I do well. We are looking uh, at this point at what it would cost to leave our houses uh, 
in a livable mode, mode by, uh, for example, changing the sagging. Uh, that is not the end of the story, though. Uh, Goldsmith, uh, through Goldsmith, the board at the time, about 10 years ago, rough estimate, uh, agreed that we should have a study made of Speak into what, the microphone. what the future, what the future would cost us. And that study uh, took into Can't hear him. not only the houses, but also the infrastructure. Ah, good. Thank you, Keith. Uh, but also the infrastructure. And that study led to the conclusion that sometime, I believe it was between 2000, 2000 and, and 2010, there was an annual cost to keep everything in good shape, including the, the infrastructure of one million dollars. Are you aware of that piece? Oh, you have the study. This is the study. Yeah, good, this, good. This is a study from 2012. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, there was no appetite among the homeowners at the time to do anything about this, which only kicked the ball down the road and we are now looking probably at, at figures. I've asked that the, I was on the board at the time, uh, and have asked more recently uh, that the study be repeated, which has not happened. Uh, so there is- Can I ask a question? The, Do you recall how much it cost to have this done? Pardon? Do you recall how much it cost to have the study done? I, I can't hear you. The cost of the study, did, do you remember? Oh, the cost of the, cost of the study. At the, t at the time it was, somewhere around $5,000. And that is one reason why the study was not repeated. Yeah. Um, the point of my remarks is that uh, what we are looking at today is not the end of the story. There is a, another problem coming, another financial problem coming up on top of what we're talking about today. The cost, uh, the, the cost of keeping the infrastructure in 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 shape, in good shape. I don't know, Lexi. Is Lexi still here? Lexi, did you see anything in the cartons uh, you have undoubtedly received from Goldsmith about the study I'm talking about? Uh, all that I have a copy of the study. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. She has a copy of the study. Oh, 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 see, yeah. Uh, I think I do too still. Well, I will pass on to you.
you know, one of the, when I first moved in a year and a half ago, Ben Stevens gave me a copy of the study and he, he said, you probably need to get this updated, okay? I put it to one side until about three months ago because it wasn't relevant, okay? When I read this study, you know, a couple of things come out. One, this study is remarkably accurate. You know, when you consider this was done 10 years ago and they're for forecasting 10 years ahead, it's remarkable how close a lot of the numbers are, okay? So whoever did this did a great job. However, in my mind, what's the point of having a study done if you're not going to follow it? And, and we didn't follow it. I mean, there's so many things in here that weren't followed, you know, so, you know, consequently, we've ended up with this problem. You know, so what, so in other words, what's the point of having it done again, yet? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, one of the reasons uh, I saw of nothing being done after the study, one of the reasons, in my opinion, my own opinion, uh, I see why uh, there was no follow-up to the study is that we could not come to a conclusion uh, within the or within the HOA uh, on uh, an assessment when money is when large sums of money are needed or and building a reserve to have that money available when the event occurs. But hasn't that been our problem from then till now? Nobody, whatever, you know, in all the five developments, nobody has ever addressed it. It just lay dormant. And that's why we we're at the point we are now. And this is not unique to Hillside. All five, all five Hill, all five HOAs are in a similar situation. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's it's incredible. incredible. You know, we're all faced with the same problems. Yeah. Everyone's panicking at the same time. Right. Each one of the boards, mm -hmm. through the years, have not addressed this. Yeah. And like I said, that's why we are where we are yeah. now. That's why we are to, talking Something today. needs to be done now. Yeah. It needs to be fixed over the next four months, five months, six months, but something needs to be done. So in effect, we're talking today about only part of a realistic uh, projected, realistically projected situation. Thank you. Any other questions? One more quick question. I think one of the comments made was that this assessment, this is a special assessment, even if we do it this way, that it would no, have it's to be not. disclosed to a buyer. Don't call it. No, I'm sorry. It's not what it that is. it would have to be disclosed to a buyer. Well, technically, as it's, such? technically, it's not a special assessment. But I think you know, if you if you sell your house, it's in your best interest to disclose this as an assessment. I think when we bought our house a year ago, we were told it's going to increase maybe 5 to 10% every year. Every year. And you're certainly covered. I mean, it's, you know, right. that's, that's what you would say right. to a buyer. Yeah. They know that. Right. right. I think any place is going to go up yeah. like that. Yes. And you know that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, you know, I, I don't know, I, I hope that, you know, that, now that we've had this opportunity of presenting some options, one thing we need to add in, if anybody else has any ideas on how this can be addressed, we are open to anything. Anything and everything. Anything and everything, exactly. You know, maybe there's a magical solution out there somewhere that we haven't thought about, I, I hope. Now, we feel, the board feels, that everybody, because of the amount of money we're talking about, everyone, in the uh, hillside has to have a say or needs to have a say or whatever. You have to be satisfied with what we're doing. Now in my mind, and I'm not sure if we can do this 
it not legally or in, in, in line with the covenants. But in my mind, you know, we've got five options. Let's assume that, you know, when we go, go to vote on this, that it's evenly split. 20% per, you know, or, or not evenly split, but let's say it's, it's split over the five options. You know, so we're back to square one. We don't have a clear winner. Yeah. What I would propose to do is pick out the top two or three and then have another vote. And if you if it's split over those three, then we'll narrow it down to one and you can vote. You know, so we'll force the issue. But somewhere along the line, you know, we've got to come up with a solution to this problem. Right. right. Any other questions? Are you finished, Pete? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's vote for the next hour. Does anyone have any questions? Would anyone like to write us a check? I wanted to ask why you said in the covenant would be a two-thirds vote. Would, we would all think that's that. Not why are you enough. changing it to 50%? 50, 50 oh, that is not the Bible. Because it's too hard to get a two-thirds majority. <laughs> you know, if you have a simple majority, it's just a little easier, you know, getting 50% as opposed to 66%. You know, so... Actually, with the great one, you get two-thirds. Right. Yeah, that's why they moved forward very much with the plan because it was impossible. It's impossible. It's, it's one vote per household. Yeah, one vote per household, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both can have the vote, not made. <laughs> <laughs> Is a percentage of votes you need the ones in attendance or the total residency? Total residency, 67. Total residency. I think it's about 67. Total residency. Total residency. Total residency. Total residency. If you have a special assessment, does it have to be of the residents or the people present? All residents. All residents. All residents. Right. They have to do it by proxy. So we would do a written ballot. Obviously, if you if you can't make it, you you're a proxy. Okay. You know, so everyone gets to vote. Yeah. All right. Now, it seems to me it's an easy decision. I think it is. I think it is. But I mean, just, you know. we're not doing it. No. You know, we're just giving everyone the opportunity at least of listening and, and voting, but I think it's an easy decision. Basically, it's just a little increase on your your normal increase. Annual increase, yes. We moved here four years ago and it was 250 a month. Yeah. Now it's 305. Yes. Without any special. Yeah. So. You know, I think the other thing that's worth mentioning, you know, as, I like this because there's a lot of flexibility built into it. So let's let's say we get two years down the road to 2025, and we've spent some money on some siding, etc. We can look at this and say, great, it's going according to plan, or ooh, we're still a little short. You know, we need to we need to up this. Maybe we up it to 10 percent, or 11 percent, or 12 percent, or something like that. So there's flexibility built in. Same the other way. You know, we get a few, year, a few years down the road, we've taken care of the siding, we've taken care of the roofing. Now we can sit back and say, well, you know, we've got a, some money left in the reserve fund. We don't anticipate major expenses for another 25, 30 years, whatever. We can back this 9.5% off, you know, so. Yeah, so you can do that. Any other questions before I hand it over to Ruth? How much did you say a roof was going to be 10,000. I hope it is. <laughs> All of the estimates, that's not how you know. Yes. I don't know if you just heard what Lexi said. Lexi said 10,000 is the high end of all the estimates. And just wow. for siding, 12,5 was the low end, 15 high end. And I, you know, again, talking with Dick over the weekend, we think there are ways, and I don't want to get into it now, it's not, it, it's not the right time, but I think there are ways that we can get that fifteen thousand dollars down for the siding considerably. What do I mean by considerably? I don't know. You know, but if we think we can get it down. Anything is better. Anything is better. So you know, you look at these numbers. Maybe we're looking at worst case scenario. Maybe in actuality it becomes better. But I'd rather, you know, look at it on the high side, and then when it comes down, we can all feel good about that. Uh, one other question would... I am going to charge you for all these questions. I know. I'll pay, I guess. Uh, if it, if 
what our POA normally pays for maintenance through Lexi, okay? That's what our monthly fees are based on. If something goes up appreciably, uh, then we, we're, we've got that new amount per month. So less would be able to go into the reserve if more had to go into the monthly uh, maintenance fee. So if our groundskeeping and all of that went up 20%, say, well, then we would have to take put less from into the reserve out of that yeah, particular year's fees. But don't, don't forget though, you know, when, when we put up nine and a half percent, only 40% of it goes into the, mm -hmm. the reserve fund. So, you know, nine and a half percent of two thirds or 60% is going into the general fund for maintenance, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, you all know that we had a huge increase this year on maintenance for the landscaping. Personally, I think if it goes up again, we should kill the grass and not pay it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, it's becoming outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Stop yeah. the yard in the winter. Yeah. I'm sorry? The grass doesn't grow in the winter. No. And the it's just they stuff. still cut it, though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually a fair, fair thing. I mean, theoretically, if you've got a shortfall in your budget, you've got two choices. You increase your income or you decrease your expenses. Exactly. And, and that's probably worth looking at. Maybe you could do trash every other week. Maybe you could cut the main... But that's small stuff, and I think that's something that the board needs to look at and, and evaluate and go from there. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. Yes. What determines the life of signage? This is just an aesthetic uh, uh, matter, or not? Yeah, not. It's not only aesthetic. It. it, it we this past year what did we spend on May was it five or six thousand that we had four we had uh the uh contract to go around and inspect all the houses signing um, I, I dropped the checkbook let me see i want to think seven but let me check okay we in this past year we had a contract to go around and inspect every house yeah. you know for loose siding missing siding you know whatever oh. we we spent Let's is going to come up with a number in a second. Seventy-five. This was just at one time. All the siding that needed to be reattached or a couple pieces replaced was seventy-five hundred. Uh, and then there was, you know, if a home had been sold and maybe the siding was loose, I think there's maybe three hundred dollars that was spent reattaching the siding altogether for new. So, so really at seventy-five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. the feeling is we're we're just pouring more and more money into maintaining something that is probably at, at the end of its life, right. you know. It, it, yes, yeah. You know, so we can, let, we can, let's say, well, we're gonna keep this siding for another 10 years. I mean, who knows how much it's gonna cost us to maintain that siding for another 10 years. It's gonna get more and more each year. Right. I think aesthetically, when I, I don't notice it now, because I've been here a year and a half, but you know, when I first came into uh, into Hillside and saw the houses, to me they look a little shabby. They just look, you know, like dated. They just yes, you you don't notice it because you live here and you see it all the time. But I think someone comes in from the outside, it does look a little shabby. That house had just sold on Lake Summit. I think Rose can speak to this. The realtor, when the realtor called you know, to ask questions. One of the questions that came up was, when are you gonna reside? You know, who's responsible and when are you gonna do it? Those questions are gonna come up more and more because, you know, it, it's, it's, it's time. Yeah. You know, I mean, that siding's 32 years old. I think it's done exceedingly well yeah. for 32 years. So maybe we can get by another year or two or three, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Any other questions before I let Ruth speak? Or if you don't want to let Ruth speak, just keep asking questions. <laughs> That's fine. I had the tour at four for patio home, but I can stop. <laughs> okay, Ruth. Because you could go another hour. Okay. You know I'm a theater major, right? I can project. <laughs> 
Thank you so much for the opportunity to get to speak with you. I know in the last couple of months, there's been a ton of fear, anxiety, and gossip. And the reason I know that it's gossip is because pretty much nobody's coming and asking me stuff. So um, I granted Bob is our executive director and he definitely has the last word, but my job as marketing director is to sell Rolling Green Village. And the reason people move here is because they bought into the concept of a life plan community and they like Rolling Green Village. Um, so having said that, and the fact, how many of you are from the greatest generation? Greatest generation. How about the silent generation? I don't think anybody in here is from the silent generation. You might, may, I don't know. How many of you are baby boomers? Baby boomers. You are, you're, these people are the result of the great, greatest generation. <laughs> You created this right here, just FYI. <laughs> no, how many of you have lived at Rolling Green less than four years? Wow, quite a bit. No, not everybody. So there's been a lot of change, not just at Rolling Green, but with COVID, with our political unrest, and we're not gonna talk about that. And the biggest thing I think that's impacted us, and some of it was due to COVID, is the inflation. Um, I don't know about you, but when I used to go to the grocery store before all this started kicking in, I could spend 150 and eat high on the hog with my husband for the week. I can hardly get out of there under $300. I quit buying all organic, so I may die of cancer, I don't know. Um, but we all have anxiety, right? Well, here's the good news. Did you know that our human body is 80% water? Which is the exact same thing as a cucumber? So that means that basically we're all cucumbers with some anxiety. Does that help you with me? I don't know. So today I wanna to kind of give you some information about what Rolling Green Village Marketing is doing so that if you have questions, you can come and see me. You can call me on the phone. If you are nervous about something, if you are confused, okay? So first of all, I wanna talk about two pieces of information that have been going around recently. And one of them is, we're not an HOA, we're a POA, okay? Well, the attorney, that does our contracts says there's no difference between a POA and an HOA. It's nomenclature. So you guys can change to a POA, but I will tell you that just because of the cost of it, marketing will not change the verbiage from an HOA. We have to go through and whew, spend a lot of money. Um, the second thing is, yes. By, by law, we are POAs. Okay, Dick, I'm not, you're supposed to be observing. <laughs> so I'm, re, I'm going to share with them what our attorney, who is our contract lawyer and works with senior living, tells me. And really and truly, I... Why, why is that even in question? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. We're an HOA. Leave it at that. I'm just telling you, I've had people say, you need to change your nomenclature. And I'm like, I'm, we're not. <laughs> um, the second thing is the fear that without any notice, Rolling Green is going to start charging you a second person fee, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Each one of you signed a contract with me or with my, one of my sales counselors, I'm the authorized signature on that. It's a contract between you and me. So like Tom, that contract is between you and me as a representative of Rolling Green. Each one of these are individual. 
So if Rolling Green, and in your contract it will state this, if Rolling Green Village were to sell, then in order for them to change your contract, they would have to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, create an addendum, have you sign an addendum, and that becomes a legal part of your contract. So you don't need to be afraid, okay? We're not going to... We're not gonna come in and blindside you and say, oops, sorry, we made a mistake. Now you all get to pay too. And oh, by the way, you're gonna pay even more because you didn't pay for so many years. All righty? So are we all clear about that? Yes. But you are gonna hit my buyer. Well, I'm gonna talk about that. Up to 80% oh, more than what I paid. Uh, we're gonna talk about that, okay? All right, yeah. now, uh, I wrote all this down so that if you want to come get a copy of it or have me say it again. I, I didn't hear what he said. said it doesn't affect him, but will affect his buyer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. So we got notice that there was going to be a fee increase and there was a death on the marketing hallway that day. Um, I'm teasing. But it was because, okay. See, they, I told you I didn't need a mic. Um, but it was because I agree, all of us were caught off by surprise. Okay, let's just put it out there and say we were surprised, okay? My job is to figure out how do I sell Rolling Green Village? Well, here's the issue. We have no data that says yay or nay about the impact of a second person fee because we've never done it before. So this year I created an Excel spreadsheet and now when somebody applies, there's all kinds of information that I'm gathering off of that, such as their age, their income, their assets, the value analysis for their patio home product, reasons for buying, not for buying. It's got 15 columns there. My goal is to create data so that in the next couple of months, I can write a report and send it to the board and to Bob saying, this is what I've discovered. Okay. I, we're not just like y'all have to figure out all that. We're going to have to figure out this too. Okay. And it's not fair for you to keep repeating things because Bob has said and has assured me that if the data shows that it's harm to the sales of the patio homes, they will come back and reevaluate what they can do. Okay? Does everybody understand that part of it? What, Jimmy? I, he didn't talk about it. And he didn't evaluate it before he did it. Because one of the things you have to learn about Bob is he's not going to change. He's not going to have his mind changed with anecdotal information. And I'm, not, and I'm not interested in that. I'm just saying there was no buy-in ahead of time. We were already, in fact, this is the first time I've officially heard it. I have not heard this officially from anybody before. Okay, and I agree with you. And that's what I said at the beginning. And so you're saying to me now you've raised the fee. So you've raised the fee. After the fact, you're analyzing it. You're going to analyze it, and then you're going to come back and change those people's fees? And, and still... The people that didn't buy, didn't buy. I mean, I, that's nonsense, but, but that's a separate issue. Jimmy, we have, we have an option at this point. It's either to collect data and figure out what's going on and adjust, or nobody will talk about it and it'll just keep getting higher and higher. And I don't think that that's the right solution okay, for so us. So go ahead and collect your data. I don't see where that changes anything. It's fine. But that's not, I, it's okay. I don't like it. All right, the second thing that I've started doing is in December, I sent out a letter to the Realtors Association explaining fee changes here at Rolling Green and offered three lunch and learns with Realtors. I've now completed that. And so people, Realtors who sell in here now have come to the luncheon to understand the value of Rolling Green Village and we've also talked about things that need to happen in their listings so that people 
understand this is a retirement community and we have an age restriction. Because they're on MLS, when people are trying to buy their home for the first time see a $150,000 home for sale, and they just don't, they don't pay attention. And I can tell you, after being here 18 years, probably 50% of our inquiries come from people who didn't realize this was a retirement community. So my goal is to get them educated. I'm also going to be offering once a month a networking event for realtors that can bring their friends, their prospects, they can do any of those things, get tours of Rolling Green Village. The third thing that I'm going to do is make sure that every realtor who's selling a home in here, um, and right now I only have one realtor, I, he has, I haven't been able to get in touch with him, have had a one-on-one -on -one with me and understand what it is that you're buying when you come to Rolling Green Village, okay? Then the other thing is, I've given them all copies of the, of the application. I've given them copies of the fee structure, disclosure booklets that have our uh, audits and our five, five years of, of history in there. Then I've also gone ahead and invested in strategically upping the amount of money that I do in print and digital ads, focusing on uh, the benefits of home ownership at Rolling Green Village. I have now signed up and am more engaged in the Greenville, Simpsonville, and Greer Chamber. I have studied hours of information on our digital marketing, and I've increased the SEOs and geofencing for adult children. And if you don't know what that means, search engine optimization is where in what I put out there, there's certain keywords that will be captured because of the words that I use, okay? And by the way, that's when I say we, it's our marketing firm too. And then I'm going to do a little bit more juju on the patio home tab of the website, get some testimonials on there um, from both residents and family members. Now you say, okay, but that still doesn't ease my anxiety. I don't know that I can sell my home for more than I bought it. So this so far in 2023, I have two people who put contracts on homes and the people that are moving out are moving out for personal reasons. The homes they bought were between, they bought them for between 240 and 260,000 and they were able to sell them for 340,000 and 360,000. Now, I've heard about these people who go in the neighborhood, hear about the fees and then say, oh, are you crazy? I'm not gonna pay that. What I will ask you to do is give me their name, give me their information. And that way we can follow up. If they don't wanna buy here because of the fees, I can record that. Okay, I can't record it if you say to me, if Janelle comes to me and says, hey, I was talking to somebody in Lakeside and they said they had three people look at this house and decided not to buy it because the fees are outrageous. Oh, okay, who is, who are, what are their names? If she doesn't know, how do I know? Okay, um, so here's kind of how I need your help. Yes, okay, first of all, if you see people driving around, and there are a lot of them on the weekends, have you ever noticed that? If you see them driving around and they stop to ask you questions, I'm not saying you have to flag them down, but after you tell them how much you love living here, ask them or encourage them, hey, before you go too far on this, you need to start with marketing. Meet with them, fill out an application, understand what the cost is involved here at Rolling Green. Second thing is, if you have any questions about marketing, what I'm doing, whatever, at marketing, not at home, but um, please come and talk to me. I, I really am a nice person 
And I really, <laughs> I really am a nice person. I'm here because I am deeply devoted and in love with Rolling Green Village. I've been here 18 years. If my grandchildren lived here, this is where I'd live when I retire. Unfortunately, I don't live here, so you know I'll be moving. Um, but please come and talk to me. So it's so easy for gossip to be spread here at Rolling Green. Now, come on, how many of you would agree with that? Okay. So I, there's people who said to me, oh, God, Goodness, I never gossip. I just observe and then I relay my observations to practically everyone. Okay. Your perception is exactly that. Your perception. Okay. And you're entitled to it. I'm not going to talk people out of their perception of things. But when you're conveying information, please make sure that you're communicating. Oh, by the way, this is my opinion. Okay. That would really help. Next thing is encourage realtors. If you're going to sell your home before they ever put the sign up, have them come meet with us so that we can establish what's the value and the benefits of living here. Again, I'm trying my best to collect data. Hey, Jan, I haven't seen you in so long. It's good to see you. So far, I have only done three uh, 2023 applications in the patio homes. Two of them put contracts on homes. The people that were selling were here two years and one three years. One of them sold for 200, bought their house for 260 and sold theirs for 360,000. The other one, 180, and they sold it for 320. So that's all I have. That's why Susie, or whoever it was that said that, I need to know who went around in the neighborhood and was making those comments so that we can get with them. Is it true that Rolling Green has changed over the 18 years that I've been here? Sure, we've changed, right? <laughs> we've all changed. And, and not only have we changed, but the world is changing around us. We live in community. You're my neighbor. You're my friend. You're my neighbor. You're my friend. The way that we work through this is together. And as a, together as a community, sometimes that may mean that I don't get my way all the time. Pretty much every day that's true where I work. But, you know, we're, I'm committed to being in community, and I'm committed to serving you, and I'm committed for all of us to be able to find a way to get along and love each other. Right, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am? I, 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 a lot of what you said is correct. People are listening to rumors, and that's, rumors are just that, okay? At the same point, you say you're living in community, whatever, but nobody ever told us about this increase in fees. No one. What, no one discussed it with us. Nobody said we're going to do this. We took, we found out about it through the rumor mill, and then got it confirmed by paperwork. But nobody until today, nobody officially told me. And our opinion didn't matter at all. Okay, so, so, so you, you want us to tell you, but but you're not communicating with us. I am not the one that has to communicate with you about the fee increases. I'm just the one who has to make it work. You're part of the village, and, and I'm going to respond and say Rolling Green Village did not respond. Did not okay, respond. so if we want to say that, and that's your truth and that's what you feel, so feel free to say that. At what point do you let that go and we work together and figure out how to make this work? I'm not saying no, I'm just pointing that out. I mean, I'm not okay, so hear me loud and clear. I get it that you weren't notified and you didn't have any discussion ahead of time. I've, I've been here 18 years and I've never been notified or had any discussions about fee increases. <laughs> normally when you increase prices, you offer some benefit in return. Zero benefit. Okay, 
but I, oh my gosh. Okay, what I'm gonna say is I hear you that you were not informed correctly and that you didn't have the opportunity to express your opinions. I hear that. I have no power over that. But what I do have power over is how do I move forward to make Rolling Green strong in marketing? And that's what I'm doing, okay? If after a period of time, the research shows, yes, uh, you're gonna be hurt by your fee increases this year, then I have been assured by the executive director that that information will go back to the board and they, there will be an adjustment made. How much? I don't know. And do I have any any kind of influence on that? Maybe a teeny weeny bit, but not a whole lot. Yes, Susan. Uh, question I have, and it escaped me when you were talking. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Comes to us all. The, the uh, increase in the entrance fee that we're discussing, who mandated that increase, and can they can it be backed up with figures as to why the increase was so much? Okay, so the budget process is done between LCS, the board, the resident financial committee, and the executive director and administrator. Okay, that's who the budget is made up with. So that question, it's a great question, but I think I, I can't answer it because I wasn't part of it. Otherwise, I would tell you what the thinking was and why they did that. Paul. We agree with you. Sit down. <laughs> Paul, thank you. Sit down. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Just a summary of what we talked about. It's the same thing. Oh, the apartment people pay more. Their entrance fees started around 110000 for the smallest efficiency and go up to 350000 Where is that? The apartments. Here. Yes. And they get an 80% return of capital. So they only get 80% of that investment back. So they don't pay that 6000 or four. Oh, the membership fee? Yeah, they do pay that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. It's not just the caveat thing. Yes. How do houses sell without being listed versus brokers? Because in, in our area, we seem to sell more by word of mouth. No, I can't see. I'm starting to track that so I know. Um, I would say maybe 30% of the homes are sold from a, the word of a friend of a friend of a friend. My only caution to you would be if you're going to sell your house, go through a realtor because you, you would feel horrible if you overbought your house, right? If because your house, seven people wanted it and you just had gotten a bidding war and you ended up paying way more than the value of the house. So that's why I encourage realtors. But if somebody really wants the house and they yes. want to that's mm -hmm. their prerogative. Yes, and I usually don't find out about that until after the fact. That's a good question now, Rose. Any other questions? Keith? <laughs> Keith, I know I didn't talk as long as you did, so. Any other questions? I may make a comment that's, that's a little old, and some people know this. When I started looking at a place to live, I looked in many places. One of them was Bentonville, Arkansas, which I found places that I really liked, but, and I liked the area, but I just, it just didn't feel right. I looked at a community in Tennessee, which was run by LCS, and I liked the way it was, um, the things that were there, the opportunities I would have had and so on, but I didn't really know anybody in Memphis. I was there for a, a college thing. But anyhow, so I didn't do that. 
I looked at an apartment complex run by LCS in Seattle, Washington, because it's close, that's where all my family is. And that I had the opportunity to buy into an apartment uh, that was a second phase that had just opened, people were moving in every week. And the apartment that I looked at had a, one, it was a one bedroom, bath and a half, living dining combination with a kitchen and a den and it was a brand new brand new apartment nobody had ever lived in it they had just finished the building we're starting to move people in the fee and this was in 2017 in june january of 27 uh of 2017 the membership fee at that time <clears throat> was for one person was $608,000 with a return of 85% and a $4,500 a month fee. Oh so 4,500 a month? 4,500 a month rental <laughs> plus the buy-in of $608,000. And that was five, almost six years ago. Well, how did you get to Greenville? Will you refresh my memory? I have friends in Spartanburg. Okay. And we sort of talked about it, and I came and visited them, and we drove down here and looked around. And, and then you found Paul. <laughs> no, that was long after that. <laughs> that was a year and a half later. Actually, what's that one started going down here? Before moving into Rolling Green, before moving into Rolling Green, Oh, come we on. looked at a lot of places. My daughter and son-in-law took me to an awful lot of places. And um, the minute I walked into the lobby, oh, I've got a tea time. This building, the old building, when they were all done, it just, just press this button. kind of grabbed you. you David was at the front desk, down. and it's we all know David. God bless him. Shoot. I'm sorry we lost him, but I'm happy he is happy where he is and he needs advancement. But he was wonderful. He introduced himself. He's still wonderful. He is. He is. But we miss him. I know. But anyway, he, thanks for sharing. And the lobby where we walked in, which today the way it was redone, I don't like it. I like the old lobby. It was all early american very welcoming very comfortable and it, it just in the transition and everything that they've done truthfully they lost a little something hopefully we can get it back but out of all the places we looked at this was the most welcoming and and um emily at the time i don't know if you did go back and remember her i did she invited us for lunch i i was absolutely amazed at their menu and what they served and everything else it's a little different today but it was beyond expectations and money wise it was great i would like to say something which is unusual for me i'd like to introduce our two newest residents oh my Hillside. goodness baptism by fire <laughs> tom corley and Eileen corley corley I'm curious, why did you move here? Well, <laughs> well I had a customer in Greenville who is an interior designer and she had, she heard that we were getting old and she could tell that, <laughs> that I did and that we were looking for a place to move. And uh, we had done three more houses Speak into the microphone, please. I can barely hear you. Just pass it. She had done three or four houses and redecorated them. And she told me how pleased the people were. That, how glad they were to be here. That, that, that she said she thought I would look into it. And Did you look anywhere else? Oh, uh, yeah. We, we yes, they do. Several places. In fact, we had <coughs> on the waiting list for a place in, in Atlanta, Austin, Georgia. And uh, we thought they were on the waiting list there, but we said, another place here in Greenville. This was just the main place. 
Can't hear you. The upkeep alone is fantastic. Because uh, Dan and Karen took me into one place. I don't remember the name of it. I walked into the lobby, walked in a little further, and I turned around to Dan and I said, get me out of here. <laughs> I thought I was like going to- old person. Yes. Oh, the smell, smell was the absolutely smell. horrible. And I said, I'm going to throw up. Get me out of here. <laughs> And we, we left. I mean, it was awful. I couldn't imagine right. living there. Are we ready? We're ready. Ready to go? Just a couple. <laughs> a couple quick.